What's up, wrestling fans? Joe Stradamus is here with you. Tonight at AEW, there was a massive altercation backstage. We're going to get into that in a second, but first let's set the table very quickly. Um, you guys know that CM Punk sat down to do the press conference. All of a sudden, he just went off on Nick Houseman and was like, yo, hey, fucking Colt Cabana is a scumbag, you know, that sort of thing. Listen, I agree with CM Punk. I'm actually glad that CM Punk mentioned this stuff about Cole Cabana because I will admit, and I'm going to tell you, a lot of people thought that CM Punk picked on Colt Cabana. A lot of people saw this as, oh, poor Colt Cabana, and when in reality that's not the way things are. So I actually really like that CM Punk is finally able to sort of say his side of the story because it sucks when you know, you look like a fool like me or anybody going around thinking that, you know, CM Punk is the bully when in fact maybe Cole Cabana is the bully or the scummy person or whatever. And, and you know, I, I really still don't know 100% what's going on, but it does seem like CM Punk is more innocent than people really believed. Like people really believed it was Cole Cabana is the great innocent guy and CM Punk is, is the mean guy, but that's not the case. So, not bad for CM Punk to mention this. But then, you know, the whole Tony Khan situation happens. And here's the thing. We're going to get into all of this very quickly. But we're going to talk about the backstage situation. There was a fight backstage. Okay? There was an altercation backstage. There was a fight. Um, it's been confirmed by multiple different people. Uh, you can actually even hear it. It happened during the press conference. And uh, Jericho actually makes Tony Khan aware of this. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, bro. Thanks, bro. Some shit went down. By the way, that's Chris, so that's Chris Jericho right there whispering to uh, Tony as they're making an exchange. Tony Khan does not have his phone with him. So because Tony Khan doesn't have his phone with him, basically what's going on here is as Jericho is saying his goodbyes here, um, you know, Tony Khan quickly, you know, throws in a basically throws in a little thing that's like hey, everything's good. Everything good. You know, everything good back there. Hey, uh, thanks, Chris. Hey, is everything good? Everything good back? No. And, oh, some shit went down. Some shit went down. So that's Jericho saying, like, hey, Tony, oh, so, some shit went down. Because Jericho's trying to let him know. Some shit went down. So there's Jericho letting him know that some shit went down. And uh, a security guard, according to the uh, journalist uh, in the building, ran to the back. So there was an altercation in the locker room. There was a fight um, between a whole group of people. Let's tie this all together with a nice little bow. First of all, back in May, Adam Hangman Page cut a piece of garbage promo on CM Punk. I called this that night. That night on my review, I said Adam Hangman Page just cut a horrible promo and a garbage promo, and it sucked. And it was garbage, and it forced CM Punk to act weird in his promo. Then people were throwing CM Punk under the bus. Listen, make no mistake about it. CM Punk doesn't like me. I don't really care about who likes me or not, and, and I'm sure CM Punk don't give a crap. So I'm not some giant CM Punk mark. I do love CM Punk as a performer and, like, everything. I think CM Punk would probably hate my guts and wouldn't like me worth a damn. So it does me no favors to sit here and tell you what I think about, you know, blowing CM Punk or anything. But CM Punk was right. Had him Hangman Page cut a shit promo. I called it on my review that night. And now here we are. And I'm going to tell you this. CM Punk is a moron tonight. Because CM Punk, when MJF just came back, now, unless this is part of a huge storyline and we're all being worked, by the way, if we are, it's one of the greatest works of all time, but if this was a giant work, amazing. But other than that, why in the world, when MJF is returning after months and months and months, all we're supposed to be talking about tonight is CM Punk and MJF, but instead we're talking about Adam Hangman Page, the Elite, and the EVPs, and Tony Khan, and all this crap instead of MJF. So CM Punk, by going off on this rant about the EVPs and Adam Page and everybody being a fucking idiot who couldn't run a target, now everyone's talking about this instead of MJF. And now there's been a fight in the back, allegedly, in the locker room, 
Uh, and now that takes even more away from MJF. Boy, I bet MJF wishes he was part of the fight. Hell, if I was MJF, I would have been part of the fight. If I'm MJF, let me tell. I'm going to tell you something dead honest right now. I'm going to tell you straight up right now. First of all, Tony Khan has lost his goddamn control of this whole fucking thing. Because when you are nice like this, these people run amok. Okay. We have lost control of this goddamn thing. And by the way, JD on Twitter earlier tweeted out, if this was real, then why didn't Tony cut CM Punk's mic? If this was real, why didn't Tony cut his mic? What are you talking about? You think Tony Khan would cut CM Punk's mic? First of all, Tony Khan would never do that. Second of all, Tony Khan isn't like that. He just kind of like, oh, he freezes. Does, does JD think that Tony Khan is some other person than what he is? What do you mean, why wouldn't he cut his mic? Tony Khan would never cut someone's mic. He's a fucking, he's afraid to. What are you talking about? What a stupid tweet. You're an idiot, JD, if you ever hear this, you stupid midget moron. Um, but anyway, the, uh, now I'm, I'm getting off the track all over the place. If I'm MJF, screw Adam Hangman Page and, and the Elite and, and Kenny Omega and whatever else. Screw those guys getting into a fight with CM Punk in the locker room. If I'm MJF, I go right into CM Punk's locker room and I punch him in the face. Because I'll be goddamned if after three to four months of me not being on television or whatever it's been, and I make my big ass return and we go off the air and I'm back. MJF is back, baby, and here we go. And now the whole wrestling world is talking about Adam Page, the Elite, and Colt Cabana, and CM Punk. Bullshit. I am. I swear to God, if I'm MJF, I am punching CM Punk in the eye. Not necessarily because CM Punk deserves it, and that's a good thing to do, but because I'm a selfish prick. And I want the attention back on me. I want I'm I'm getting every every bastard I can in the back. Tape this, record this, TikTok this. I'm gonna go punch CM Punk in his eye. Make sure you get a video of it. Hell, if I was MJF, I might even punch Tony Khan in the eye. And I'm not even kidding. I am not kidding. MJF just got all the spotlight robbed off of him. And if you don't understand that, you're a moron listening to this. If you don't get what I'm saying, you're a fucking idiot. And if Tony Khan and let, let me tell you something, I'm not I'm getting angry right now thinking about it and I'm not even MJF. Adam Hangman Page is a pussy who thinks he's a cowboy who wears fucking butterflies to the ring. You guys are cowards and don't have the balls to hire a real announcer like me, and now you certainly never will. CM Punk then calls you out for it, but then ruins MJF's spot by doing it. Okay? So I hope this fucking holiday, when Colt Cabana's lighting the menorah, he feels guilty about ruining MJF's return. By the way, Nick Houseman, hilarious on that post show. And then uh, this is what we've got here. And then uh, Tony Khan getting worked up later on, by the way. Listen to this. I compared myself to Jim Crockett Promotions this weekend. I think I got a taste of the same medicine Jim Crockett Promotions took. But I have a lot more fucking money than Jim Crockett did. And I'm not going to get... I'm serious. I'm not going to sit back and take this fucking shit. Tony, thank you for the time. Let me just ask you, is everybody in a is everybody in AEW on fucking crack cocaine? You know? Is everybody like uh, like strung out about like getting ready to fight somebody? Is that what's going on back there? Is that why it's like this? Is everybody just ready to just like go? Ah, ah, ah. Let me tell you something. I'm barely able to live week to week right now. If this is what it's like to be rich, good lord. I love Tony Khan. I I do like CM Punk. Um. I I mean I like I kind of like Kenny Omega, I like the Young Bucks. Not the biggest fan of Adam Hangman Page. Not don't really like him. I mean that much. 
I mean, he's got some good athleticism in the ring. He's a pretty good wrestler in the ring. Uh, he's got a good look, I guess, except for the butterfly things. And, like, he, he like, thinks he's a cowboy, but he's not a cowboy. He's, like, a weird, soft fucking person. Um, he could change. He could become a, ma- a megastar, and I'll, I'll eat shit, you know? But um, this was bad tonight. This was all bad. Because although it's entertaining for me right now and for all of us, I believe, um, this is a... You you ruined MJF's return, and that that it you've done that. I mean, maybe not. Maybe in two weeks things will be back to normal again. But Jesus, this whole week is going to be this. I've gotten uh, reports from people that I know that are there, people that I know who work in AEW, people I know who wrestle in AEW, and people that I know that went there tonight. That people are frustrated. People are depressed, sad, disappointed in what's going on. These are people that have been around in AEW since the beginning. Hell, when CM Punk came into AEW, CM Punk touted how the one of the reasons why he joined was because of Brody Lee and the way the the the, the locker room kept it a secret and the way the locker room banded together and CM Punk touted that. But yet now we're seeing the literal opposite of that. And, you know, wherever CM Punk goes, whatever you think about CM Punk, wherever this guy goes, fakery, double standards, and bullshit lurk around every corner. Remember, according to CM Punk, AJ Styles is a racist. Except AJ Styles is friends with the New Day and several other people. So which one is it? Is AJ Styles a secret racist, an obvious racist, or is he just a racist to CM Punk, or is CM Punk just saying that? Also, you know, we shouldn't make fun of fat people and fat shame people, but unless you're CM Punk, then you can fat shame people, right? Or, you know, you shouldn't be anti-LGBTQ and things like that, but you can call a guy in the crowd a homo. You know, again, like I said, I'm game for anything. I don't give a crap about nothing. I don't care about virtue signaling, being politically correct, all that stuff. I couldn't give a damn. I hate that crap. First of all, I love and I hate everyone equally, so I don't give a damn. But it just feels like contradictions lurk around every corner. Oh, it's the greatest locker room ever. I came here not because of the money, but because everyone was so sweet singing Kumbaya. Oh, wait, but now they're all EVP scumbag assholes who couldn't run a fucking target. Oh, and by the way, MJF is going to make his return after months and months away. Big ass return. And back in May, Adam Page was a moron and cut a shitty promo. So tonight I'm going to flip out and bring it up and attack everybody. And then MJF's return is going to get completely destroyed. And then later on, we're all going to have a fight in the locker room. And then Chris Jericho is going to tell Tony Khan that some shit went down. And the security guards are going to go running. And then we're going to have the most interesting story of the entire night, entire week, and entire year. And it all has to do with the media scrum after the return of MJF that now doesn't matter really. That's my opinion. You don't agree with it? Go ahead. Don't agree with it. I cut a huge promo on how Adam Page fucked up. The night he did, after AEW went off the air, when other wrestling reporter people and podcasts and live streams, when all those guys... By the way, I've been doing it the longest. Longest live post-show after wrestling on YouTube right here. Go look it up. Don't believe it. Live. Keyword is live, by the way. When everybody else was sucking Adam Hangman Page's ass and saying it was the greatest promo he ever cut... That was the biggest load of fakery I'd ever heard. I said, how could you say this was the best promo he ever cut? He sounded like an idiot, and he ran around in circles and buried CM Punk in a weird way that didn't make any sense that forced CM Punk to act weird in his promo. I literally said it that night with no time to think about it. 90% of people didn't agree with me. Well, now we know I was right. And now tonight, I'm right about this. You literally stepped on MJF's return by doing this tonight. And Tony Khan did nothing. Why? 
JD tweets out, why would Tony Khan not cut the mic? <laughs> because Tony Khan doesn't want to piss anyone off. He just wants to like everybody. You think that Tony that if the if 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 CM Punk went off the rails and started flipping out, or if anybody went off the rails and started flipping out, that Tony would go cut their mic? You think he would do that? Do you think Tony Khan has the balls to do that? He should, it's his company. Dude, CM Punk cut him off several times tonight. Tony Khan was like, listen, I, I should have done this. And CM Punk's like, no, see, you don't. And he just cut him off. And he was like, I'll speak now because I'm the boss. Bro, nobody knows what they're doing right now. That's what it comes off as. And I know several wrestlers there that are telling me the same thing. And I have several uh, journalists that are there that are telling me similar things about some of the other things I'm saying. It's all coming together. Anytime you want to hire Joe Cronin, Tony Khan, give me a call because I'll be there to fix this fucking locker room with you, okay? These people are out of their goddamn minds. Um, commentary was atrocious tonight. They called the women's title match as if it didn't matter. There was a lot of problems tonight. There was a lot of great things, though, tonight. All Out was a lot of fun. There was a lot of matches. It was a success overall. Um, they didn't do as well as their last show, so this was the first All Out that took a step back. It took a step back because they were competing with WWE and WWE NXT. And it was Labor Day weekend. And honestly, there wasn't as much interest in this show, to be honest. It's the dead truth. You don't like it? I don't know what to tell you. Uh, I think AEW can bounce back. This is the first really sort of down, dark time I've seen them go through. And guess what? They're still pulling in 900,000 to a million on the ratings. Ratings are slightly up. So there's all this turmoil going on, but ratings are slightly up compared to what they've been over the last six months. Ratings have been at eight, 880,000, 920,000. Well, over the last three months, they've been in the mid 900s and they've hit a million a few times. So pretty comfortable with that. Just got to get stuff squared away a little bit here. Big backstage brawl. What are you going to do about it? My name is Joe Cronin. That's my take. That's my update. In case you didn't know about the brawl that took place after the show, I'll have more on this later today whenever I wake up from my slumber. Um, and we've, we'll have some details on who of those individuals are involved in the skirmish in the back and some more uh, details. I also may or may not have audio of the situation. Um, according to the person, they are afraid to give me their video because it would give them away, I guess, somehow, or their position or whatever. But uh, I do have someone who's uh, potentially uh, thinking about uh, lending me the audio. Um, but before uh, we do that, I got to just make sure that it's legal to play the audio uh, because I, I don't know the laws in Chicago and I don't know the pro the property and where they, you know, whatever. I just have to look at some things before I play the audio. But we may have some audio for you, which is very interesting. And if I can't get the audio played for you guys, I will transcribe it and explain what I hear on the audio, even if I can't play the audio. Um, we'll see what happens. This is a big thing. This is a big fight. People are losing their minds. And uh, they're all fighting over CM Punk. So welcome to AEW Locker Room, where we sing Kumbaya no more. I'm Joe Cronin. Leave a comment down below, and if you leave a super thanks, I will pin your comment to the top of this page. Super thanks down below if you like what I do. And if you want to drink coffee and you do drink coffee, or you want to try coffee, or you want to try a pumpkin spice coffee that's pretty friggin' good, uh, check out coffeebrandcoffee.com. Coffeebrandcoffee.com. Anti-woke coffee for people that are badasses. Go check it out and use coupon code Cronin. You'll get a percentage off on the deal. And you'll be supporting the show. I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Here's some other videos popping up right now from me that you might have missed.